Hey, hey, what's up, y'all? Thank you for tuning in to another edition of On the Needle. And you may be thinking that I'm going to review Lauren Hill's album, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. If you read the title, you might be thinking, oh, that's a mistake. He meant to review that album. No, that one is a classic, and I do love it, and I actually own it. But today, I am talking about her Unplugged album, which is actually kind of a little rare to find on vinyl. And this album, I feel like you have to be maybe 35 plus to really appreciate the MTV Unplugged era. Uh, this album came out, I believe it was 2002, and her Miss Education album came out in 1999. And it just really goes to show the impact that the Miss Education album had because it came out in 99, I think it was maybe late 99 if I'm not mistaken. And she ruled that year. Of course, you know, she ruled the Grammys the following year. And then the album really didn't start to cool down until 2001. So she really had a period or short period rather um, between the hype of the releases, even though judging by calendar years, it may seem like, oh, that's a three year gap in between. But that album carried her for a long time. Uh, not to mention that she had just come off of the hype of the Fuji's wildly successful The Score, uh, which came out in 1996. So again, another, seems like it's a big span when you add it up by calendar years between 1996 and 1999, but that was a huge album as well. So by the time that died down, then that's when we started hearing the murmurings of her solo album. But that's neither here nor there. But what I really love about this album is how honest and transparent it is. There aren't a lot of, you'd say, radio type of singles. The only big song on here, I would say, is the one where she samples, well, not she samples, uh, where Kanye West uh, ended up sampling uh, from her, The All Falls Down, where Selena Johnson uh, ended up doing the hook on that song. And Kanye West got this from her original song, from Lauryn Hill's original song. So you can see the track listing here. Um, dang it, I don't know why it's escaping me right now. I cannot remember the name of the song. But anyway, it's, it's on here. It's on this album. Uh, that's probably the one that most people, if they were to just listen to this from top to bottom, they would instantly recognize that one because of Kanye West's All Fall Down. All falls down, excuse me. But um, this album, I think, is really important. And Lauryn Hill was a bit ahead of her time, I believe, when she released this. Because that whole acoustic vibe, even though that's something the MTV was doing with the Unplugged albums, but just really wanted to know a deeper sense of the artist, who they are. That's something that people really crave these days. And I feel like if she were to put this out now, it probably would have been more successful than it was back then. I feel like it kind of got overshadowed uh, even at that time by the success of her first album. Uh, by then, she had started receiving some of the negative press. People were saying that she was acting weird and that she was maybe missing appearances and things like that, which she addresses on here. She has several interludes in between the songs where she talks about just being human and how having a big staff of 40 people on her team really started to stifle her creativity. So she was very honest, open. She even talks about dating and how she met her husband and then how she uh, did not want to put on any airs and she really wanted to introduce him to her real self. Uh, her voice cracks on here and she still sounds amazing. Uh, she's crying here on some points. It's a very meditative type of album, uh, in my opinion. I feel like it's something that you can just put on, has a great vibe, and you know it really just takes you to another place. Uh, her first album, Miss Education of Lauryn Hill, does some of that too, but it also is layered with pop elements in between there. Uh, for instance, like the doo-wop, that thing, great, great message, but it's backed by this beat that's just I mean, honestly, she doesn't even really have to say much over it. You can just jam out to the beat itself and the track. Uh, but on this album, 
it's very stripped, just her, and she's playing guitar on here, um, just her, the guitar, her voice, her rawness, and it's one of the most treasured vinyls that I have in my collection. Not only because it's rare, but also because it's a moment in time that many people, I don't believe, uh, really got to know uh, that side of Lauren Hill. We don't know if we'll ever get another full-length studio album from her, but for those that say her last album was Miss Education of Lauren Hill, that is actually incorrect. Uh, this was her last big studio album. She's dropped other projects since then, um, but this is the last album that you can find as far as available for purchase on the, the mass platforms, things like that. So. Let me know your thoughts about Lauren Hill and about the Unplugged album. Uh, if you've heard it, what are your thoughts? What are some of your favorite songs? What are some of your favorite elements? Uh, did you like it? Did you dislike it? Uh, that's possible too, because it's definitely different from her debut solo album. And it's very different from the work that she did with the Fugees. So there's a chance that some people may not have liked it as well as those albums. But curious to know your thoughts on it, um, and I will see you all on the next video. And also, if you have not already done so, make sure that you head on over to the Water Bearer Podcast YouTube channel. Uh, that is a new channel that I've just started for a new podcast that I have coming up here. And it's basically talking about getting inside of the mind of the Aquarius sign, which is my sign, and how the Aquarius interacts with all other signs of the Zodiac. So if you're not an Aquarius, you can still watch the show and really enjoy it because we are talking about all signs on this podcast. So check it out. Peace.